Yes, what's going on? I know what you need in your life. You need some Dr. Umar Johnson in your life. That's what you need in your life. You know Dr. Umar Johnson. Yeah, you probably heard about him the same way I did. From that big show, The Breakfast Club. Yeah, he gets millions of views every time he's interviewed on there. Do you know why I think The Breakfast Club like him so much? You can't name one who's done more to save our children than I have. Because he's humble and he's not scared to talk about the difficult issues. Like Bill Cosby, for example. Speaking of Bill, if I could. I take issue with the conviction. He just did an interview for the first time a couple days ago All right. from prison. Mm -hmm. Legally blind, by the way, sitting in the prison right south of Philadelphia. I know some folks who know some folks who are in there with him. So Umar's overall argument usually goes along the lines of this. There's a white racist agenda against black people. And it manifests in different ways. In this particular scenario, it's manifesting in an innocent man, according to Umar, Bill Cosby, being put in jail, despite him being legally blind. He need help to go to the bathroom, help to get dressed, help to eat. Mm -hmm. Legally blind. You know, it's really unfortunate that Bill Cosby is legally blind. Yeah, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. But he wasn't on trial for being legally blind. He was on trial because people accused him of putting pills in drinks and raping them. He was found guilty, so we have to live with that decision. If I was Umar Johnson, instead of trying to tell us some conspiracy theory that has no facts, I would maybe just send him a message to try and keep him uplifted. True, he said he knows some people that know some people that's in there with him. And if it was me, I'd probably send him a message saying, There's five major problems that affect black America. Five. What are they? Mass incarceration, mm -hmm. miseducation, gentrification, access to wealth, and police genocide. Yeah, he's very articulate, isn't he, Umar? So the question arises, now you've identified the problems, what are you going to do about it? Four long years ago, we began a fundraising campaign to build America's first independent African-centered school based off the principles of Pan-Africanism and international economics. So Dr. Umar's solution to the systematic racism against black people is to build a school to educate young black people. I think that's a noble goal. Now that video is a little out of date. He's been collecting money for 10 years to open this school and he's been under a lot of scrutiny. Now, if people are going to trust you with the education of their children, it's only right that they should know exactly what qualifications you have and you should be able to prove that very easily. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Umar Johnson and I am a school psychologist and doctor of clinical psychology. In addition to that, I hold degrees in political science and education. Okay. So, I mean, one would hope that these are the kind of qualifications that he would have. I mean, I'd be a bit worried if it was in like maybe video direction, because boy, if you ask me, you could do with a little bit of zoom there, you know, in that camera angle. You know what the internet's like. I mean, there's been rumors of him not actually holding the qualifications he says he has for years. Now, some people say, why don't you just post all of your certificates on your social media and just like put all the rumors to rest with the evidence? But I think I know the reason why he hasn't done that. You see, at the moment, he's in a transitional period and he's moving from Philadelphia to Delaware, where the school is based. And he's probably just misplaced his certificates, you know, like maybe somewhere under this rubbish here in his house. And when he moves and he just tidies up and he rummages through all of that rubbish, he'll find his certificates and then he'll, I'm sure, be quite happy just to post it online and just kill everyone's rumours. Now, I don't know if what I'm about to post online is real or fake, but one of my friends sent me this picture that's supposed to be of one of Dr. Umar Johnson's uh, certificates. And it's kind of been defaced. So I'm going to have to ask you just to ignore the fact that instead of philosophy, it's been scraped out and it says high coonery. Normally when you get to my level of education, you become a coon or a Negro. 
And what's the difference between a coon and a Negro, Envy? The coon consciously sells out his people. The Negro does it out of ignorance. I can work with a Negro. Never trust the coon. See, if you're going to be a black activist, you better make sure that there's no contradictions in your game, right? Otherwise, people are going to call you a coon. At the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy, we will have a 90% raw and vegan diet. Yeah, doesn't really, he doesn't really look like the raw and vegan type, does he, Dr. Umar? Nah, yeah, he looks like he's been enjoying quite a lot of meat. You know, with all this pan-Africanism, you know, go to Africa and ask about veganism. Yeah, I'm not sure it's very popular in Africa, veganism. But listen, listen, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. Don't listen to me. You know what I mean? Eat what you want, doctor. Do you know what I mean? Eat what you want. You know, at least you got the core things there. You know what I mean? Like family and community, making sure that we keep the black family together and we're strong in our community and we raise the young ones right. You know what I mean? In addition to that, there will be the science of the community and the family. We have to teach our young men how to be fathers. This right here is the PA child support system. You can simply go and do a docket search yourself. Here, first name Umar, last name Johnson, and you click search. This is Umar Johnson. Go and look up this information. This man right here, if you come here, and you click on this, you can see right here, generic order, generic order, Interim order in effect, conference officer, generic order, order to vacate a bench warrant against the defendant is issued, generic order. It's not the it's not the best look, is it? You know, when you don't pay your child support and you can check online. Like the veganism. Do as I say, not as I do. But you know what? Let me tell you the silver lining. At least there'll be a lot of experience with dealing with, you know, the oppressive court system. And he can kind of teach that to the kids that's going to his school. So I was wondering with Dr. Umar's school, if white people could come to his school to learn Pan-Africanism. Legally, you cannot say that this school is only for black children, even if it is private. So I can't say this is a black boy school. OK, I know that ninety nine point nine percent, if not one hundred percent of my students will be African of African descent. But I cannot say that, you know, when I hear him talking about this school, I start to get a feeling like an undertone, like the opposite of integration. Now, what's that word? Yeah, segregation. That's the feeling I get when I hear him talk as marriage is a political decision. Who you marry tells me who you are. When you marry a woman, you don't just marry her. You marry her culture. You marry her community. You marry her people. You understand? So when a black man marries a white woman, he's making several clear uh, points and messages he's sending out to his own people. Because there's no greater symbol of your loyalty to your struggle than to marry a sister who shares that struggle. What kind of person in this day and age thinks that one group of people shouldn't integrate with another group of people, you know, share ideas and share culture. What kind of person thinks that one race shouldn't mix with another race? It might be the kind of person that thinks maybe their race is superior. I mean, Angela Yee's sitting right next to him. I wonder what she thinks about racial mixing. Well, my yeah. dad's Chinese and... <laughs> I mean, look, my whole side of my family is Chinese. Mm -hmm. You know, when the Breakfast Club have a guest on their show, they always take a picture to put on their social media, don't they? You know, to promote a podcast. You see Angela Yee? Yeah, she didn't want to take it that day, did she? Are you against interracial relationships, period? Absolutely. She must be African. Yeah, in this latest interview, Angela Yee's not even there at all. You know, if I was to have some kids and I wanted to send them to a fine institution, the first thing I'd want to find out is if that fine institution teaches self-respect. In this fine institution, we teach self-respect.
The second thing that would be on my list, you know, if I was sending my kids to school in a fine institution, would be, is there an opportunity for them to learn foreign language? At the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy, they will learn African language. I was thinking more along the lines of one of those languages that could be really useful in maybe international business. You know, like a language like Mandarin. Africa is rolling out the red carpet for China. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're taking over the Caribbean. They're taking over Africa. They're never taking over the Caribbean. They're all in South Africa. In fact, Mandarin is now an official language in the Republic of South Africa. Imagine how valuable a black man would be in a negotiating situation with a Chinese if he could speak fluent Mandarin. But what do I know? Maybe it's more important to be able to speak an African language so that you can call upon the power of the ancestors. I want to call out the names of the ancestors. Marcus Garvey, Ashe, Frederick Douglass, Fannie Lou Hamer, Ida B. Wells, Ashe, Harriet Tubman, Henry Holland Garnett, Martin Delaney, Ashe. Speaking of languages, you know, my mother, she speaks fluent Yoruba. Yeah, that's one of the languages that Umar Johnson's got in his promotional video. Yeah, one of the ones he's going to teach the kids. The funny thing about my mum speaking fluent Yoruba is that she's white, English. It just so happens that she married my dad and they lived for 17 years in Lagos, Nigeria. Yeah, she said something about how it was important for her to learn language so that she could communicate and have a relationship with my dad's parents. That's also how she learned to cook all of the Nigerian cuisine that my dad likes to eat. And it's not just my dad that likes it. I grew up on it too. And that's how I happen to know explicitly that Niger Jolof is superior to Ghana Jolof. Simple. Yeah, while my mum was out there in Nigeria, she was a school teacher. Like 15 years in Lagos. You know who one of her students was? David Oyelowo. Yeah. You know, he starred in that movie, Selma. You know when you're a black activist, like Dr. Umar Johnson, you know your history. Take my ancestor, Frederick Douglass, mm -hmm. who knew their history and still marry white women. Had Frederick Douglass not married that white woman, he would be undisputably undisputably the greatest black leader that ever walked on American soil, but because of that one mistake that he made. But I wonder if he's familiar with Viola Greg Liuzzo. Yeah, she's a white lady. She's a mother of two. She didn't like all that racism. So she took it upon herself to go and help out. She drove in her car from Detroit to Alabama. You know, so she gets in her car and she starts ferrying black people to the march. Yeah, the KKK found her and they shot her. She died. She died for the black struggle. You know, the same way Martin Luther King died, she died. Gunfire. I don't vote for black people who are not married to black people. See that white woman? I would be proud if she was one of my ancestors. In fact, if the ages matched out, I'll be proud if she was my wife. Yeah, if she was my wife, I would do everything to make sure we stayed together. But if we couldn't stay together and we had those kids, I would definitely pay my child support. Let me ask you a question, Dr. Umar. Uh, you, you rock with Frederick Douglass heavy. Blood you know, relative. That's your blood relative. Blood relative. He had a white wife. His second wife was white. Okay. Okay. And he had he has he must be held accountable for that, by the way. Okay. I'll tell you what. If anyone's got any great ideas on how we can hold Frederick Douglass accountable for marrying a white woman, leave it in the comments. Because I don't really know. I mean, we're already off to a bad start because Dr. Umar Johnson has gonna name this school after him. I tell you what should be very easy to be held accountable is all of the money that's been sent to Dr. Umar Johnson for opening this school. It's my personal belief that all of that money should be made public and available for everyone to see that it's all above board with no discrepancies. 
Now, when you look on the GoFundMe, we only raised 160, but most of my donations have been mail-in checks and mm-hmm. money orders. People don't check, don't trust the internet. GoFundMe. So, but we raised a half million in a year. So he started collecting in 2010. 2015, he said he collected 500 in a year. It's now 2020, and he's just purchased for 750,000. Mm-hmm. I need a check. I need Jay Z. I need that check, Puff. I know you're listening, Puff. Oh yeah, all my rappers out there. Revolt TV right now. I, 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 I need gonna, that check. It's, it's gonna be hard. And, and we tax exempt, so they can write it off on their taxes. Help me get this school so we can give our boys a new reality. I like everything. Actually, his tax exemption has been revoked. PayPal has frozen his money, and his GoFundMe doesn't exist anymore. If you want Jay Z and Puff and all these big people to be confidently giving you money, you've got to be squeaky clean and crystal clear. See the way he's gone about this campaign. It makes me wonder. Is this another Barack Obama tactic where you get black people all in their emotions Mm -hmm. and they follow you out and do whatever you want and then at the end of the day you benefit and we don't? You see if Dr. Umar doesn't come through with this school, get a board, get the staff, fix up the school and get it open, he's going to become what he says you cannot work with. Normally when you get to my level of education, you become a coon or a Negro. And what's the difference between a coon and a Negro, Envy? The coon consciously sells out his people. The Negro does it out of ignorance. I can work with a Negro. Never trust the coon. If you want to donate to Dr. Umar Johnson, I've put a link in the description. And if you want to find out your own research, I've put all my references and videos in the description as well. Make sure you give me a like, subscribe if you like the content. Peace. I don't have a problem with people bringing up the fact that Frederick Douglass had a white wife. He shouldn't have done it. And if Frederick Douglass was alive, I think he would admit to that that was one thing he wished he would have undone. Your wife is white. So we're going to stop the black talk right there. Because your white wife, she's going to get everything you bring home. You yourself didn't think enough of us to contribute your money and your capital and your wealth and your estate by marrying a black woman. Are you against interracial relationships, period? Absolutely. She must be African. Are you biologically African and are you psychologically African? There's no greater symbol of your loyalty to your struggle than to marry a sister who shares that struggle.